All right, I'm the Flat Rate Master, and today we're going to take a basic look at the equipment you need to reflash on J2534. All right, so equipment you need to reflash. First and foremost, you need to understand what you're doing when it comes to, to reflashing. When everything goes right, it's easy. It's literally pushing some buttons. When it goes wrong is when you need knowledge, how to recover. That's the big thing with, you know, programming, is you gotta know when to hold them, when to fold them, when not to sit, cycle the key, you know, making sure you read directions on the sites, etc. So, basic equipment you need to reflash. Well, first off, you're going to need a J-Box, J2534. It's the standard used by everybody, well, for the most part. Now, a lot of manufacturers are getting really good at allowing everything to be flashed on their vehicles. GM is a great example of, you know, you can, you can even use a J-Box with everything of their scan tool. Toyota the same way. You can flash any module with a J-Box. Use their scan tool, etc. Now choices on J-Boxes. Now obviously my Autel came with a J-Box. Now the shop has a Cardac M. Drew Technologies, probably the preeminent name in flashing equipment and their Toolbox software is really great. They're really good at support. So definitely a good company to go with. Now, obviously, my new Bosch ADS-625, the wireless interface is also a J-Box. You notice a theme, right? So that nice scan tool came with a J-Box, so I can use it to flash programming. You're going to need a Windows laptop. Sorry, it, it's got to be a Windows laptop. And you cannot use another browser other than Internet Explorer. And there's a bunch of restrictions on what you can have on here. Compatibility between manufacturers, and I'm not going to go into any of that stuff. If you want to know some of that stuff, go see Keith Perkins, L1 Diagnostics and Programming. He does it. He has a class on J2534 on his Patreon. So if you need in-depth, he's going to be your guy. But you need a Windows laptop. I mean, a desktop will work, but it's a little more awkward. You need a really good internet connection. And again, you're going to need Windows Internet Explorer. Not Edge, not Google Chrome. Internet Explorer. Now, the only thing I use Internet Explorer for is flash programming. Google Chrome for the win. And you're also going to need to check the manufacturer's site for their specs of what they need as far as operating system. A lot of manufacturers have gone to Windows 10. I think some still hire Windows 7. So you're going to need to understand that you've got to have compatibility there and sufficient memory you know bmw is a complete complete resource hog on a laptop so keep that in mind you need plenty of memory you need to meet the minimum specs you also need a clean power supply there's various companies that make them uh otc schumacher the snap-on one uh, you know, several rebranded ones, but you need a good, clean power supply that is going to provide sufficient voltage and amperage for the vehicle you're programming. BMWs are no notorious about drawing a lot of amps and a lot of voltage. You got to have the voltage set high enough with enough amps to support the programming event. And we'll get into some of the places where you don't want to do J-Box programming. Now, an important resource is NASTF. I will put that link in the description as well. That is a task force that has 
all the OE information, the websites you need, their costs and all that. So you can go to the site, figure out, you know, whether or not you can do it. One other caveat, you may need an LSID. What is that? Locksmith ID. Some manufacturers are getting kind of tooky about cybersecurity, so if you don't have a locksmith ID, you may not be able to finish that programming event or add keys or reprogram the keys if you have to, you know, start the car. You may not be able to complete that event without a locksmith ID. Ford, I know, has gotten bad about that on their late model stuff. Other manufacturers are getting there, so something to consider. Now, ultimately, the best way to do it is with the OE interface and the OE system. So Ford IDS is a great example. You know, programming, everything is included. You know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Now, again, LSID might be needed. Important to note about J2534. By federal law, you know, we're not gonna get into right to repair here I'm sorry, but federally J2534 is only required to allow you to flash for emissions. So pretty much limits you to powertrain. Now again, some manufacturers allow you to do everything with the J-Box, GM, I wanna say BMW, but not really because some of their programming, you really need the OE interface. Toyota is a great example. I mean, Toyota and GM are the two big ones that pretty much you can do anything with a J-Box and the OE software, including getting the OE scan tool. But other manufacturers limit you on what you can do with a J-Box. If it's not powertrain, you may not be able to do it. So you have to understand that. When you get into programming, you have to know if you're using a J-Box, what you're going to be able to do and not do. It, that's really important because you know you get in there, you pay the you know fees, and you go to program, and what what it's it, it's not an option. It's important when you're pricing out a reflash event, you do some research because you may not be able to. Simply as that. Uh, now, BMW on their F cars can be a programming nightmare you're pretty much limited to like the aftermarket tools that allow programming like AutoLogic because they only they will only program one module whereas BMW kind of wants you to program everything and they do it through a ethernet connection to the car instead of just through the DLC. So if you're into BMWs and you're gonna be programming a bunch, might wanna look at an icon. It's actually cheaper than a Kardak. So, might want to look into that. Ultimately, if you want to fix cars, you're going to have to get into programming or get a guy's phone number like Keith DeFazio or Keith Perkins. I don't know why programming guys are named Keith, but they are. One of those guys to come in and do the programming. We have a great guy that comes in here. His team does great work. You know, we set him aside. They take care of it when we can't program it ourselves. I know it was a basic look at J2534, but you know, it, it's a basic overview. So hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like it, surprise. If you want, if you want to see more videos like it, subscribe. If you want to see more videos like it, subscribe. Make sure and hit that bell notification so you get notified when I put out a new video. You didn't like the video? Yeah, give me a thumbs down. Comments are always appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master.